Hello and good morning and welcome to this, the WP Builds weekly WordPress newsletter. This is number 28. It's covering the week commencing the 27th of August 2018 and it was published on Monday the 3rd of September 2018. Just before we begin, a couple of items. If you go over to the wpbuilds.com website and you use the navigation menu, you can subscribe to us either via newsletter or you go to the Slack channel or the Facebook Messenger updates or so on and so forth. We put all of this stuff out on YouTube and it's all there as well if you wanted to find it. Another item in that menu is the webinars link, and we've got two webinars coming up. We've got one with Corey Mass from Kanban WP, and another one with Arindo Duque from WP Ultimo. So you might want to get on involved with those. The next one is if you go over to the deals link, you can find 25% off the Unstoppable courses by Erin Flynn, 25% off Main WP. Um, you're going to get 20% off Blog Vault and Mal Malcare, 20% off Toolset and so on, and you can use those links. We've got a competition at the moment at the giveaways link, which is wpbuilds.com forward slash deals. It's um, three agency licenses for the WP Block Party, which is a suite of Gutenberg blocks. So there you go, lots of nice stuff. I'd really appreciate it if you, uh, you know, if you wanted to use any of those links, that would be great. And a review on iTunes is always very welcome. OK, forget all of that now. Let's move on to the WordPress weekly news, shall we? The first one comes from the WP Tavern website, and it is saying that uh, Gutenberg 3.7 has been released. There's not really a lot to say about this. Um, you can download it. Uh, there's the fixed toolbar has been renamed the unified toolbar. Um, there's a new animation and icon specifically tailored for the block converter action. And also there's this thing called like focus mode. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. I think it's going to be called spotlight or something like that. But essentially, if you go over, you can see what incremental things have happened to Gutenberg this week. And it's pretty minor, to be honest. There's a couple of links in the show notes linking to the uh, WordPress.org article and the WP Tavern article as well. OK, the next one is another. I've got quite a few from the WP Tavern, so props to them for giving us so much news each week. WordPress to support the classic editor for many years to come. Now, this is an article explaining Matt, Matt Mullenweg's decision. Obviously, the classic editor is being adopted very widely as there's quite a lot of people disgruntled with Gutenberg. And he says, uh, I love that people are using the classic editor plugin. There is an infinite number of ways that WP can be used and not all will be ready for Gutenberg 5.0 when it's released. I don't want to say forever, but I don't see any reason we, we can't maintain classic for the edit screen for many years to come. So there you go. That might really um, help you if you've had real problems getting to grips with Gutenberg and worrying about where this is going. So at least it would appear on the face of it that it's going to be sticking around for the foreseeable future. OK, the next one, if you are using Gutenberg and you're into it, there is now um, a, a Gutenberg block library. Um, it's provided by a man called Danny Cooper, who is a WordPress theme developer. And if you click on the link in the show notes, you'll be able to see he's got dozens and dozens of blocks. And obviously there's an, an area where if you've, you're the developer of a block, you can submit your own. At the moment, it's like a, a filterable grid. So go in, check it out if you're using Gutenberg, because obviously this is the way it's going, it would seem. And it's quite nice that somebody's making the effort to put a library together for us. OK, the next one is a little bit technical. I'm not going to explain it. It's just to say the following, how to enable inner blocks in a Gutenberg block. And I'm going to quote from the title here. Inner blocks are Gutenberg blocks that allow inserting additional blocks within your own block. How many times can I say block in a sentence? To understand it better, imagine a short code that wraps the content. This content can then be shown or hidden. You can achieve that inside Gutenberg with inner blocks. And then the article just goes on in fairly technical detail involving lots of code to show how that's possible. This next one is kind of tangentially related to WordPress in that there's a plugin called Translate Press, which is attempting to be a bit like WPML um, and those kind of things. Are, you know, you can translate your stuff into different languages, all of your content. And it's just really an article about the plugin authors and what they went through to get it going and how they decided to do it, created a logo, put a put a test of it together, launched it, kind of failed and kind of 
stay the course kind of article. It's just really fascinating look into what it takes to release a plugin and how much heartache is involved. And obviously having not ever released a plugin, it didn't really occur to me that a lot of this stuff was going on. So it's just, just a nice little read to get the, into the mindset of somebody who does that for a living. Okay, the next one is again the WP Tavern. This is the distributor plugin now publicly available. I've linked to the the plugin page itself as well as the WP Tavern article. Basically, it's a plugin by Tenop which um, allows you. It's in beta at the moment, I should say. It allows you to syndicate content across a, a multi-site network. So the the idea being that you could publish a piece of content and then it would go out onto all of your multi-sites. Um, just an interesting idea. If you're using um, multi-site, this might be something you want to look into. And like I say, it's called the distributor plugin. So there you go. The next one, if you are a forms user, and specifically if you use WP forms, they now have a Gutenberg block. Um, and essentially this allows you to, in the Gutenberg editor, allows you to click on the WP sorry, WP forms block. And then from there, it allows you to put in whatever block, uh, sorry, whatever form it is that you want to be added in. They've also updated um, conditional form confirmations and a whole bunch of other things. They've got net promoter score things in there and they've updated those. So basically, if you are a WP forms person, it looks like there's a few updates gone on in the last little while and they're now on version 1.4.8. So possibly worth looking at. Now, I know that many of you are avid users of the Elementor page builder. Well, this week sees the introduction of something called Navigator, and it's a right-click option, and it allows you to see the... How to describe this? It's very visual. If you're in a um, an page and you click right-click and you use the Navigator, you can see a, a horizontal... Sorry, vertically aligned um, section where you can see all of the elements that go into that page and you can drag them around. So for example, it might say that there's a heading and then an image. Well, you just drag the image up above the heading and everything swaps. So it's a really, really quick way of getting in and without the drag and drop, finding all the elements, you can just do things in a, in a very, very quick way. I really like it. I think it's really innovative and, uh, and different. So go and check it out, the Elementor Navigator. Okay. Now, we've all seen articles like this next one before, and we've all sort of sighed <laughs> because of their, you know, they're trying to claim that they've got a, a nice comparison between different plugins or themes. Well, this one, this one I really like just because it seems to be so comprehensive. It's comparing 100 WordPress themes for how quickly they load. They've got a, a bunch of caveats for what are the rules that they've applied to doing this and how did they actually carry out the speed tests and, and what have you. But they have genuinely taken an absolute ton of time. They've, they've compared the theme only with the theme and the Swift performance plugin and the theme with the W3 Total Cash plugin. And they've got absolutely loads and loads of metrics. Now, it's a bit nerdy, but if you are looking into a theme and speed is super important and you are intending to use either of those caching plugins, then that might be quite an interesting thing for you to look at. Okay, the next one, very, very quickly, it's just to say that WP Engine, obviously a little while ago, they bought out StudioPress um, a la Genesis. And now, as of this week, it's official. Beginning today, access to the Genesis framework and 35 premium WordPress StudioPress themes are included in your plan when you sign up for a WP Engine account. So not a lot more to say than that, really. If you're a WP Engine user, you now get StudioPress um, themes and Gen Genesis stuff for free. Okay. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about the fact that Yoast had added a, a side, a Gutenberg sidebar for some of their um, Yoast settings. Well, now they've introduced uh, an, another set of things that their plugin requires, and it's the snippet preview. Now, normally this would have lived underneath the, the text editor as a, as a meta box. Well, now they've added a sort of modal pop-up window which completely covers the content. So when you press on snippets preview, um, all of your content is, is hidden and a giant full-size um, modal pops up with all of the snippet settings in. It's, it's really cool and apparently, according to this article, this, this thing, this modal thing has now been added into core. So it's gonna be available for absolutely everybody to put their settings in interesting not sure what i think of it entirely hiding the 
the sort of editor itself. I, d- I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. My mind's not made up. But anyway, it's there and it's it's been done and it's in core. So that's quite cool. Okay, that is it for WordPress news. Just a couple of well, three other little bits. The first one is entitled "Artificial Intelligence All Set to Transform the Internet." Now. Artificial intelligence is obviously getting cleverer and cleverer by the moment. This is just a really interesting little article about how our AI might be powering the development and building of websites in the future. There's a couple of products out there, one of which is Wix, and Wix have this already kind of under development. I think it's called Wix ADI, and there's another uh, software called FireDrop, nothing to do with Wix as far as I know, FireDrop, and they are attempting to make it so that it asks you a bunch of questions, you answer them, and then it kind of builds the site for you. And the question, obviously, in my head is, if this is so good, where is my job in the future? Go and check the article out, see see what you think about it, and what, what is WordPress going to do to combat this? Fascinating. The developments are so rapid and so compelling. Okay, the next one is the fake font dropper. This is coming from the security.net website. And it's just absolutely fascinating what the lengths that people will go to. Um, This is a hack that was found. They obviously get um, instructed to clean up websites and they found this one. It was injected into, I believe, into a core WordPress file. I think it was index.php. And this little bit of code, this little bit of JavaScript put up a, a kind of Chrome notification which said you you can't view this page properly unless you click on the update button to install a font. Um, So it looks as if it's completely official, it looks completely benign, but of course what happens when you click on the update button, you go and download some executable file which then runs in Windows and does, well, whatever that does. So just breathtaking what these people will do. So they're, they're trying to get your websites to become the carrier of, you know, the, the way of getting other people infected. So my goodness me, hopefully now that Securi and all these other plugins have uh, identified this, we'll see less and less of it. Okay, and the very last one today, I didn't even know that Google had a browser outside of Chrome. It's called Google Go, and apparently it's been... Um, it's been used for for over a year now by millions of people because it enables you to uh, view websites in a fairly rich way, even if you're on a terribly slow internet connection. Well, from now on, this little browser, which sits in your mobile device, I don't know if it's available on the desktop as well, you can um, you can click a little button and it'll read. It'll read the entire page out to you in, I think, 28 languages or something. Now, it tries to work out, this is the interesting bit, it tries to work out what the most important bits are. And I suppose if you've got a semantic website where everything is clearly labelled, that'll be fairly easy. But it, it still tries to work out what are the most important bits. So it's <laughs> fascinating. If everybody starts adopting just listening to websites instead of looking at them, we've got to be very careful about the way we structure everything, don't we? OK, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean it very much. Thanks for listening to this number 28 of the WP Builds newsletter. Uh, hopefully you'll catch the, the podcast on Thursday. But I hope you have a lovely, lovely week. Goodbye for now.